Hey, welcome back today, guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Yellow Shot Builds. Uh, today, we are going to do a version two uh, build breakdown of the 2001 Lexus IS300 that is turbocharged. let's get into it uh, first and foremost like I said version 2 if you haven't caught any of the other videos please pause go check out some of the other videos kind of get caught up where we're at here um, this is not the stock GE motor that originally came with this chassis I blew that one up and go check out the video you'll see what happened but today we are going over the GTE short block that is in this it's got pistons rods crank oil squirters the whole bottom end brand new from toyota out of the box zero miles absolutely freaking awesome i used my vvti head and had that machined uh had the valves cut everything gone through pressure tested decked freaking awesome those are the two major components that you know getting the the foundation if you will uh started with this thing did all the maintenance everything resealed everything valve covers you name it so had to start with a good foundation get the heart settled <laughs> get everything sorted then we can get to all the good juicy stuff all right so we'll get started here i guess i'll just kind of go piece by piece here first and foremost the turbo manifold right there that is the cx racing it is the thicker wall uh manifold some people are not a fan of the cx well this thing originally started out with the CX Racing kit, but I have since changed out quite a bit. So really it's just kind of the piping, intercooler, manifold. Um, I still do have the blow off valve. I'm thinking about changing that out. But turbocharger is a 6068 Borg Warner. Um, I believe it is an SX300 uh, turbo. Um, T4 flange. Um, it is massive. I can barely get most of the picture of it but it's in there it's tight and she loves to whistle which is awesome next as you can probably see the factory battery is not there I had to do a relocation that's when I did this I had to get the ABS module that's normally right here had to relocate that did a battery relocation ABS relocation all new lines list goes on um, I've got a Gretti Profec uh, boost controller. Um, it's actually really cool, but when I did get it tuned, my tuner was kind of saying, you know, it'd be better if we could boost by gear or have the ECU control the boost. It's, I'm not opposed to it, but I really did like the Gretti Profec. Uh, we used it on one of the GTST uh, Skylines. It was actually you really user friendly, and I really liked the control features and everything you could do. But then again, this thing's set on high boost, and why am I going to turn it down, right? I mean, you know, who wants to do that? Moving forward, um, it is still uh, MAF tuned, factory MAF, uh, intercooler piping, CX Racing intercooler. Still, it's not a forward facing intake manifold. I have the stock manifold for the intake, stock throttle body. Um, I did, which some of you Lexus guys will know, I deleted that little butterfly valve that's in the intake there. Uh, it is emissions related. It does help when you are NA, but turbocharge, it's just another restriction. So I deleted that when I was rebuilding the motor. Can't forget the old Haltech 2500 Elite ECU. It is a standalone ECU, but I have the boom sling harness that is piggybacking the factory ECU so I can have all my factory options with the automatic trans. Um, sunroof, power windows, you know, all the amenities. I guess the biggest change since the last um, 
version of this vehicle was making it a return system because the factory um, GE uh, motor does not come with a return system. I used, a, it's an aeromotive regulator, JEGS pump or uh, gauge. I used, I think it's hot rod fuel hose was the company and they had a bunch of different color options and everything. Kind of went with the anodized purple, kind of with the blow off valve, uh, the tile wastegate that I have, all that stuff kind of matched. So um, yeah, as you can see, it's pretty tucked, pretty tight, but uh, does some does some work. So um, I did polish the factory valve covers. They didn't turn out super great, but I definitely got them down to where they, you know, it's got a nice little shine to them. But yeah, as you can see, it's freaking tight. I do need to modify uh, the downpipe a little bit more. It does rattle a little bit on cold starts. So, you know, those things you live and learn. Painted the uh, little timing cover here, silver. Kind of was trying to change it up. It was black, um, just, you know, personal preference. But um, let's see, oh, Mishimoto uh, radiator. Dude, I will say, and I've seen a bunch of people, this freaking cap leaks. The hoses freaking leak. So I'm probably probably gonna end up getting rid of that, changing that out eventually. But um, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, uh, did a catch can. That's a big thing. You can see it routed to the valve cover there, um, just to kind of help with that. Um, I did not want a recirculating one that would put the oil back in, just with moisture and water mixing with oil back in the motor. I didn't want to mess with that. So um, the other thing too, nice little upgrade. Woohoo. Yep, that is a hole through the headlight. Carbon fiber, handmade. LOZ Customs did an awesome job. Uh, did take forever to get made, but he's a busy man. He's got a lot going on. Um, can't knock him but he does an amazing job so that was pretty cool but I want to make sure that this Borg Warner was properly fed with some good air what else oh just for maintenance reference I did use a Gates Racing timing belt uh, but all factory OEM ASIN water pump pulleys went through everything every gasket I mean this is a fresh 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 motor yeah pretty freaking awesome but um, moving forward are there things that are gonna be changed? Maybe, yeah, I don't know. It's kinda of, kind of those things up in the air. I'm pretty, pretty, you know, set with the amount of money that I've put into this car, the amount of time I've put into this car. Um, my friends have helped me, as you've seen through the other videos. Um, a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of effort. I mean, <laughs> it's just, it's a lot to turbocharge your car. I mean, you think it's just an easy bolt-on thing, man. This is a typical snowball effect of shit getting out of control. That's kind of a list breakdown of kind of everything. If I didn't mention already, there's a tile uh, wastegate. I forget the sizing on it, but you know, got to get that name brand stuff. Got to be having some quality parts in here because I've already done all the cheap Chinese stuff and it didn't last. So uh, like I said, check out other videos. You can see some of the other parts problems that I had, but just breakdown of everything. That's that. The inside, As you can see, pretty stock, nothing too crazy. Um, that's that uh, Gretti Profec boost controller. Super awesome, super simple, um, but yeah. Fire extinguisher, that's a must. You start playing with this stuff, man, you don't wanna burn down. Uh, wide band brand of the boost and AFR gauge. I uh, just got an Amazon generic little pod to bolt in there. Works pretty good. I'm not super set. I seem to have a hard time looking at the gauges when this thing's ripping down the road. So it'd be kind of cool to do one of those pod, you know, things right here that might be sitting up a little bit. I feel like I might see that a little bit better and or do something on the eight pillar, but this isn't a bad thing, but I just, I, for whatever reason, just tend to not look at the gauges and it's a good idea to look at the gauges because you have gauges for a reason. Yeah, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, I guess we go over the exhaust system here. Muffler delete, no muffler. Sounds freaking awesome. Uh, I think that's a four inch chrome tip 
at an exhaust shop, uh, put that whole thing together. Car does have a factory LSD that is a torsion LSD. This chassis does have high miles. It's got 223,000 miles on it. Hence probably why the motor didn't last. But like I said, it's basically got a zero mile motor in it now. It's all sorted. This thing's ready to rock and roll. All right, so let's get down to the power goals and the power that the vehicle put down. If you've watched some of the other videos, you'd seen that I had a goal of hitting 500 horsepower to the wheels. I didn't hit that, and uh, it was a it was a hard pill to hard pill to swallow. You know, you set your goals, set your hopes, set your dreams, and you don't reach it. And it's not like I missed it by a little bit. I mean, <laughs> let's be honest, I was you know quite a bit of horsepower, but lesson learned. Um, the things that were restrictive fuel system. I thought the injectors and the pump, I knew they were going to be borderline maxing out and they did. So lesson learned. I didn't feel like changing it all out last minute. Wanted to see what it would do. Once again, you start changing all those things and changing others and creating more problems and maxing out and blowing gaskets. And so, you know, just wanted to see what it did. The exhaust system um, that I had showed uh, in the rear the factory resonator. So it's like two two and a quarter, two and three, or no, it's two and a quarter, two and a half-ish um, factory exhaust piping with the factory resonator. So it is a bottleneck. It is a factor. It's not a huge factor, but it is a factor. So changing out the exhaust, the ignition doing a coil um, over plug for all six versus the three that it comes with factory with the three spark plug wires, changing that for the ignition, that would be a factor because it uses the factory igniter with the coil and plug. So. That could be another thing that could change. So that being said, could I have hit higher? Maybe, I don't know, it's hard to say. So that being said, am I gonna spend more money? Probably not. Am I gonna change that today? Probably not, I'm gonna enjoy the car. Um, but like I said, it is super fun to drive. It rips, I'm not gonna complain. There's always things to change, there's always things to modify. I'm not gonna say it's never, but this thing freaking rips. So numbers. Let's get down to the numbers. 418 HP to the wheels, 411 torque to the wheels at 18 PSI. So I'll put up a clip of the dyno sheet. You can see the thing is freaking linear. It is so smooth, the thing rips. Um, I modified the transmission, the thing absolutely rips. So thank you, Eric at PRE Racing. He did an amazing job tuning the car. The thing is just beautiful to drive. So. Thank you for that. But like I said, am I gonna change anything today? No, this thing's been down more than it's been driven. So I'm gonna put some miles on this thing now. Uh, one thing, or actually I'll probably be a few things that I forgot to say. I have another video that I went through and you could say quote unquote built the automa automatic trans. Um, I shimmed the accumulators and turned up the factory line pressure to the high setting. Um, that made a huge difference. And Eric, when he tuned it, said that that made a huge difference. And he could tell, he asked me, he's like, dude, did you do something to that transmission? And I was like, hell yeah, I did, man. I wanted to make sure that thing could hold boost. So um, that, there's a ton of other videos, a ton of other information. I know with that setup, some people have tested well over 600 horsepower to that. So, I mean, pff, this thing's ready to boogie. Let's get to some of the typical questions that I get um, probably through Instagram, YouTube, any social media, people asking questions about this car, what I've done, is it worth it? So I'm gonna go through a couple of these questions just because hopefully this, I can just at least send you this video and we can just, you know, kill two birds with one stone here. The number one question I get asked is, hey, can you send me a parts list of everything you did to the car? <sighs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> there is way too long of a list that I don't even know if I could copy paste and send it to you. Do your research. I mean, I had to do it. I've done all these parts. This isn't the only way to turbocharge your car, but it's like, dude, come on, really? You want me to copy paste the whole list so you can get your mom's credit card and just swipe it and get everything that I got? I'm not saying this is the best platform or the best way to do it, but do your research, man. I mean, I'll give you, I mean, this is this, this breakdown is a list parts of everything I've done. So watch the video, take notes on what I use, what I did power wise, I mean, this is part of doing your research. So I am not gonna copy paste every little nut and bolt and huge parts list of everything I did to this car. I mean, God, that'll take freaking forever. So that question, 
hopefully I can just squash that one because I'm not sending any more huge parts lists of everything. So we're done with that one. And question number two that I get asked a lot is, is it the factory GE motor? Is it the factory automatic trans? And did the factory GE motor hold up to the power? So I know it's kind of like three into one, but it seems to be the general question I get asked a bunch. The factory GE motor does not hold for shit. So if you want to make some big power goals, get rid of the GE. But 360 horsepower was the previous number that I hit with the factory GE. And I think that was what just kind of tipped it over. So if you want to keep the factory GE motor, I'd probably keep it on the lower end, maybe the low 300s. Um, still be, you know, incredibly fun to drive. It's not a bad power goal to have especially with a factory GE motor that has the thinner rods. Um, compression ratio is different as well. Once again, do your research, but um, it is the factory automatic trans. Um, like I said before, shim the accumulators and turn up the line pressure and you can still hold the factory auto trans and put some power down. As far as powertrain, drivetrain, originality of all that, hopefully that answers that question. But yeah, factory GEs don't hold gotta do the Supra GTE man. The third question that I get asked a ton is how much does it cost to do all this? Well that's gonna vary and I'm not gonna share what I spent just because I am in the automotive industry. Um, I did all the labor myself with friends help and other friends doing small favors so the price is gonna vary so if you're gonna pay a shop just you're gonna be tacking on quite a bit in labor because it is a labor intensive thing so um, depends on your power goals what you want to achieve but yeah, cost wise, I mean, I'm gonna just give a general, like if you wanna turbocharge your car and be serious about it and put some decent power down, I mean, yeah, I would say you wanna set down anywhere from five to $7,000 just to do kind of a generic, I'm not gonna say cheap, but use some cheaper parts, more inexpensive. Um, the biggest thing is you don't wanna mess with is fuel and your ECU. Those are the two big things I would say, don't cheap out on, get some quality, quality parts. Um, I went with the Haltech just with accessibility, usability, keep the factory settings on the car. Um, I know the uh, Mega Squirt uh, MS3 Pro has been another favorite. Uh, Linked ECU is another favorite. Um, once again, do your research, see which one fits you and your needs. Um, I see more and more of these cars and this chassis getting drifted and people just slam it in the wall and just, you know, want to go cheap and do, you know, cheap shit to it. Um, so cost wise, I'm going to say five to seven grand, I would expect to pay to turbocharge it. Now I've already cheaply turbocharged it. And now I've gone, you know, in the middle, I'll say it's not the most expensive stuff on the market, but you know, I'm, I'm well north of the five, $7,000 range into this just in parts. I mean, <laughs> tuning, I mean, yeah, you're going to be looking at anywhere from 500 to a thousand dollars. Um, it just adds up and it's a snowball effect. So the biggest thing I can give you advice wise is if you're serious about doing it, do your research, see what's going to work. If I were to do it over again, I would probably just skip all doing all the cheap shit and move into some good parts. But you know, that's part of learning too. So I'm glad I did what I did. I wouldn't change the path that I've gone on, but in the long run, definitely could have saved some money. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is version two build breakdown of the IS 300. Uh, if you have any other questions or any other concerns, drop them down in the comments. I'll try to answer it the best I can. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of this journey. And I'm just thankful that this car is back on the road and ripping. Didn't hit the power goal, but that's life. And I'm just gonna enjoy the car. Thank you to all my friends, everybody who's helped out getting this thing on the road. Freaking love you guys. So uh, stay tuned. Hopefully we'll have some more driving. Uh, ripping around doing some burnouts and some crazy shit with this car. So thank you again for watching If you haven't already, please subscribe hit that thumbs up. It helps us out. We're just trying to grow this channel So thank you guys appreciate it